Hi, my name is Sam and welcome along to the Beginning Git video course from your friends at raywenderlich.com. This course will take you from knowing absolutely nothing about Git all the way through to being able to use Git in your daily workflow and to work with other members of your team. This course is a precursor to the Mastering Git course and if you already know Git and you're using it daily, you might want to jump straight from this course onto the next one. Before we get started with Git itself, I think it's important to take a bit of a look back over the history of source control and what actually it is. Although you might not know it, you've almost certainly used source control in the past, even if you're not used to using something like Git or Subversion. Source control is quite simply the ability to jump back in time with whatever kind of file it is that you're using. We often use it with source code for our applications, but in actual fact, it can be anything. For example, if you've ever done any audio editing in the past, you'll probably be familiar with this kind of file naming. You start out with the intention that this is the one, this is the one that I'm gonna stick with. But then all of a sudden, I need to do another one, so I'll call it Audio Mix 2. Audio Mix 2 wasn't quite right, but now this is the final one, I've got it, etc., etc. This is primitive source control. You're keeping multiple versions. You've got the ability to go back in time. Whenever you're editing a word processing document and you're using the undo stack, you're clicking undo to go backwards in time. That again is primitive source control. The word processing app like Pages or Word saves the state as you track through working on your document. Taking a step up from the idea of an undo stack, source control has existed for quite some time. You may have heard of CVS, or you may have heard of SVN, Subversion. And then recently, I say recently, 10 years ago, we moved into Git and Mercurial. These are all different types of version control systems. And arguably the most popular one these days is Git, and that's what we're gonna learn how to use. All of these source control systems exhibit a similar structure. For those of you into graph theory, it's probably a directed acyclic graph. What does that mean to normal folks? First is the concept of a commit, a snapshot in time of what your code looks like, represented here by a blue dot. Then you make some changes and you create another commit, another snapshot in time of your project. The arrow represents those changes, the diff as it were, between your old state and your new state, and then the blue blob is another commit, it's another state in time. You can continue on like that, creating commits as you go. Now imagine you had your Word document with your undo stack in it and you sent it off to a friend. They would inherit that document, they'd inherit that undo stack and then they would continue working creating a new undo stack on the end. That's precisely what's going on here. I've sent that off to my friend and they've started making commits as it were in the undo stack. They've got a yellow one. Then they continue, I continue, you've got there the concept of a branch. I've got my version of the undo stack in my Word document, and my friend has got their version, which includes the first part of mine, and then the stuff they've added on the end. And it's at this point that version control starts to differ very much from the undo stack in a Word document. In a Word document, there's no easy way to join those two things back together. But in version control, such as Subversion, or Git, or Mercurial, you can merge those things back together, creating a merge commit, which then takes all of the things that I did, all of the things my friend did, and joins them together. And that, in a sense, is kind of what version control is. It's remembering a history of your code, your project, as you work through, and the ability to integrate changes, from different branches, whether that be different feature branches you've created, or working with others. Now before we move on, let's look at a bit of terminology. As I've already said, we call this thing here, this is a commit. The idea of that is it's a snapshot in time of your work. It's a commit. You create multiple commits, multiple snapshots as you work through your project. Moving from one snapshot to the next snapshot, is a set of changes, it's a diff. So this arrow here is a diff. Then at the point where you've got one parent and two siblings, or as many as you wish, and you've split off, this point here is called a branch. These two pieces here become a branch. 
So you've branched off your work and you've got two different histories that move along. At the end of a branch, when you join them back together again, this point here is called a merge. You're merging two histories together, creating a merge commit across the end. The entire thing is called a repository. If you've used things like subversion in the past, one of the key things that makes Git different is the fact that Git stores each of those snapshots, each of the commits as a, this is what your project looks like at this point in time. Whereas if you use subversion, it stores the diffs. So when you take a look at looking at this diagram here, the arrows, they are stored by subversion and the dots, they're stored by Git. And that's a fundamental difference in the way that they work. You might think, well, Git is therefore going to create a lot more stuff. It's going to be this huge, great thing because it's got to store all these snapshots. Git uses some really clever stuff underneath the covers that allows it to really compress that space down. And at the beginning of the Mastering Git series, we'll take a look at exactly what that does. The disadvantage of subversion is if I want to know what a repository looked like at a particular state, I've got to go right back to the beginning and then replay all of those diffs. One thing to point out at the beginning of this Git video series is that it's not the be all and end all to all of your problems. It won't solve everything. Git is a really helpful source control system, but you have to build some processes on top of that. For example, how do you do branching? We'll talk about branching more later on, but should I branch for a create a new feature? How do I do code review? If somebody else in my team wants to merge some code back into the master branch, then how do we do the code review? All of that kind of stuff is all the process that you put on top of Git as a source control system. So what is this course gonna cover? As I mentioned, this is a precursor to the Mastering Git course. If you already know Git and you're using it daily, I will excuse you if you want to turn me off now and then jump on to the next course. However, even if you use it daily, it might be worth you running through it. I'm hoping that I've put some gems in here that will really improve your productivity. This course, we're gonna start off by looking at what creating and cloning repos means and how to do it. We'll then jump on to looking at how you can commit the changes that you've made, how you can make those blue blobs going across the screen. How do you save those different points and snapshots in time? Later on, we'll look at how you can do branching and then equivalently, how do I merge those branches back in again? Before finally taking a look at remotes and sharing your work with the rest of your team and the world. The Mastering Git course takes your understanding of Git to the next level. We'll be looking at some of the advanced features of Git, things like how to do rebases, interactive rebases, and the such like. We'll take particular care at looking at some common problems and how you can go around fixing those problems. We'll investigate a couple of GUIs, because in this course we'll be using the command line throughout. And we'll also delve into how does Git work? What is the Git file system? And with that, I think you're probably ready to jump into the first lesson, which will be cloning a repo. One thing to mention though, I suggest that you follow this course lesson to lesson and you keep the repo that you're working on throughout. Thanks for watching and I will see you very soon when you click the next button to jump straight into lesson one, cloning a repo. Bye bye.